Uh, my name is Tim McGinney, the Cuyahoga County Prosecutor. The, this morning, Terry in Judge Russo's courtroom moves us closer to an end of this horrific case and closer to justice for uh, Michelle and Gina and Amanda and her daughter. You just heard Ario Castro plead guilty to a long list of crimes against humanity and these three young women. He raped them, kidnapped them, beat them willfully and unlawfully, terminated the pregnancy of uh, Michelle. Uh, that's aggravated murder under the state of Ohio, and he can be held to uh, account for that. He abused him physically and mentally for over a decade. Uh, this man's the worst of the worst. He is uh, a, uh, the most violent sexual predator that uh, a community can offer. And today you saw a bit of it, and we're going to demonstrate on Wednesday or Thursday uh, the hearing that he is a fraud and a coward. The, do, do not be fooled by this head down, woe to me demeanor he has displayed since his arrest. He's a manipulator. He has no remorse, and we will uh, elaborate on that at the sentencing. The, the, uh, he is, the captor is now the captive. Under the terms of the plea agreement he signed today, uh, he has agreed to life in prison without parole. That means life in prison without parole. There is no possibility of parole for this individual, plus an additional millennium, minimum. He faces up to 9,245 consecutive years, so an additional 8,245 beyond, and up to $11,682,500 in, uh, in fines. The, from the, uh, in addition, we have required that he deed over his house, which was uh, free of liens. He owned the house. The only lien was a minimal uh, tax lien, and a, he was in a foreclosure proceeding, actually, of, for uh, uh, less than 500, which turned into 1,500 with fines, approximately. We're, we're going to waive through the county fines. We're going to tear that house down uh, as a, uh, we do not want it to be a symbol of, uh, of, of Cleveland. In addition, we're going to use his money to tear it down. We seized over 22000 in cash from within the home, and we're going to uh, use his money to tear the two houses immediately to the west and hopefully to acquire the two empty lots to the west of that uh, to, uh, for the community to decide what to do with it in, in, uh, in, in some park of hope or community garden, uh, whatever they decide to do. The, the police, the uh, local uh, community leaders, and the uh, council people, uh, I see Councilman Matt Zone here, Councilman Zone and Simperman, and uh, Cumming, and uh, the Commander Seltzer are very anxious to change that neighborhood, change that immediate area, and uh, bring some improvement to it. The, we're told that the, uh, through the representatives that the victims are also uh, excited by that possibility. The, uh, this, by the terms of this agreement, this man is going to prison for the rest of his life, is never coming out except nailed in a box or a, uh, an ash can. He is not stepping out. He's going down broke. He's leaving his assets behind. And uh, that's justice. That's the best justice we could achieve here. The uh, We want to thank the heroes in this case, there are many, and they are first and foremost the victims, Michelle, Amanda, and Gina, for their courage, their, their faith, and their endurance uh, in the face of evil. This man, what he did to them is awful. You, we are going to present details uh, on Wednesday. We're not going to do it here today. Uh, we're going to do it in front of the judge so he has the, the facts in front of him to make the proper decision as, as a sentencing. But, these women outlasted their captor. They survived. They have a long way to go. What the, the damage he's inflicted upon them is not going to disappear by this plea. Uh, the damage he inflicted on the community is not going to be eliminated by this conviction. We have to continue to uh, work with them, give them patience, and we really appreciate the media's uh, 
uh, professionalism and, and the uh, fine way in which uh, they have treated the, the victims. They have not been harassed. They have not been, uh, they, they've been given respect and allowed to recover. We really appreciate that. And, and we thank the media and, and we thank the rest of the community for giving them their privacy. They, they, they are getting the help they need and it's going to take time to recover. We're going to present some experts in uh, uh, what what people like this experience from the Stockholm Syndrome and, and, and other uh, issues to the court to give them an idea of what uh, it'll take. They, uh, so we want to also, secondly, thank the many partners who worked to make this case against Mr. Castro and to aid the victims. We appreciate, as to aiding the victims, we appreciate the generosity of the community that is shown in helping them financially. All uh, three families are under financial distress to begin with. This, this added to it. We thank the community for never giving up. We thank their families for, especially for never giving up and having faith that they could be recovered. They uh, inspired the law enforcement and the police also to uh, keep it up. The many people have been working on this case for more than a decade that were deeply affected by this. The, the police officers of the 1st and 2nd District who worked tirelessly on this case, the sheriff's deputies and FBI agents who never gave up hope, continued to in, uh, investigate and never stopped working for these women. They, uh, they, I just, I've never seen a case where the police were so involved and so emotionally uh, affected by a case. They, I had calls from FBI agents who had retired and moved out of state who were still wanted to work on the case, still wanted to help, who, uh, who were in tears at the uh, news of the recovery. The evening of the, uh, of the uh, escape, when Amanda broke that escape, was especially uh, uh, informing to me to watch what they did. We had Amanda has the courage to, to break this mental and physical bond and barrier in which he's in. And she comes out of the house and, and police arrive. I was talking to one of the, the officers. That the first responders were uh, Anthony Espada, Michael uh, Tracy, Barbara Johnson, and Thomas Harrigan. And, one of the, and, the, and the other officer was Michael Simon. I happened to be bringing an expert that, out to that house to, re, to view it at night and uh, Michael Simon happened to be there, one of the patrolmen. He told me, and he was affected by it still, and still emotional about it. He couldn't believe it when he pulled up when they got the call, and he saw the, he saw these, he saw Amanda there. He'd been looking for Amanda for a decade as a police officer. He'd, he'd seen the poster, he'd been to the rallies, he had been questioning individuals, he had been involved in different searches and things that CPD and others and the FBI had been involved in and the sheriff and he saw her and she said there's two more in there uh, that need to be rescued. So he and the other officers go in, flashlights out because although it was still light out it was very dark in this house. He kept the lights off and they had to go through curtains that this uh, barriers and sound barriers and there was sound in there so that you, it was a scary situation. And they yelled, and they yelled loudly that the police, we are the police. So they're thinking that Castro or this uh, kidnapper is still in there. So they're quite apprehensive. Uh, and the, the girls, the two remaining ladies didn't respond. They were so afraid of Castro that even though they had four police officers, five police officers in the house at that point looking for them, they still couldn't come out. They couldn't speak. And when they did find him, and they did rescue him, these uh, young ladies were so frightened that they were grabbing the police officers so that the police officers couldn't hold their lights and they couldn't see where to go. And you know, it was still quite concerning. They still thought the kidnapper was in the house. So that, that told me what fear this man put into these women and how much courage it took to, to survive this ordeal. That's just one of many examples. I want to thank... Uh, Chief Mike McGrath, uh, Deputy Chief Taba, uh, Safety Director Flask and Mayor Jackson uh, for their uh, relentless pursuit on this case and all the work they've done. The, their sex crime unit was uh, indispensable. The, I want to thank Lieutenant McPike, uh, Sergeant uh, McMahon, uh, 
Detective Lassman and, and Hunter and uh, Andy Rasmichuk right here who did some of the interrogation that followed of, of the defendant and was the lead on the uh, uh, post-arrest investigation. The, we have Captain Heffernan. I don't know if Brian is here. He is one of these guys who kept working and kept his men working on this case uh, for the history of the case and working with the family. And, and that isn't easy either. The, we had the county medical examiner's team also worked here on, on this case. Uh, and, and we had a lot of preparation to do in, in a short period when this, demand, this uh, defendant demanded his trial within 90 days and to get ready for uh, uh, 900 and some odd count. There's more indictment to any individual in the history of our county that we're aware of. So we had the medical examiner's office of Dr. Gilson and Tom Gilson's uh, colleagues, Dr. Andrea McCollum and, uh, and Wenzel and uh, Stopic and, and their forensic photography units also helped prepare for the case. Everybody stepped it up. Everybody put the, the overtime office in. Fortunately, we were, we were lucky to have a uh, tremendous sheriff here in Frank Bova. Frank's here. And uh, his team was, was critical here. They interrogated Castro, uh, broke it down, broke the facts down, uh, created the evidence that brought about this plea. The, the interviews were uh, especially valuable in this case. So I, I want to thank his uh, chief, uh, Cliff Pinckney also, Detective M Michalowski, uh, and Dave Jacobs, uh, another detective who did a, a great job in, in the interrogation. I also want to particularly thank uh, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The FBI's help here in this case and other cases has been absolutely essential and invaluable 